in mechanics, there are many other concepts um, that are very important as well. So for example, there is work, energy, and momentum. These three quantities are also very important in mechanics. So first off, like what, what, are, what is work, energy, and momentum? So work is, called, uh, is defined as the force times the displacement. So for example, let's say you push a box with a force of 10 newtons over a distance of five meters. So the work that you would uh, exert, the work that you would produce would be 10 newtons, the force times the displacement, which is five meters. So that would be 50 newton meters or joules. So joule is like um, a shorthand, it's like a unit, it is the unit for work, and it's equal to a newton times a meter, because newtons for force, meter is for displacement. But sometimes work isn't really enough to describe some uh, scenarios. So we introduce something called power. And power is how much work you can do over a, a period of time. So the units would be of course, newtons, meters, and then divided by the time unit, which is seconds, which is joules per second, which is something that we call watt. So the unit for power is watt. So the unit of power is what? Yes, that's right. The unit of power is watt. Okay. So uh, let's say we have that same scenario. We have you pushing a... Um, a box with a force of 10 newtons over uh, five meters. And then let's say you do that in two seconds, then it would be the work you did, which is 50 joules divided by two seconds. So that'd be 25 watts. Okay, now uh, energy. Energy is a concept that is very well, that is like very tied in with work because they're uh, very similar concepts. Okay, so uh, Daniel asks, I thought watt was electricity. So watt is also used in electricity, um, but it's also in electricity, it's also used as a unit of power. And it's like around the same concept as for like mechanics. Watt is just a unit of power. How much work you can do in a unit of time. So I, I mentioned that energy is like very tied in with work. This is because energy and work actually have the same unit. Um, there are two main types of energy. There is potential energy, which you, kinda, you can kind of think of as stored energy. Potential energy is stored energy. And the most common type of potential energy we experience in daily lives is Gravitational potential energy, which I abbreviated over here, GPE. And gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh, or the mass of an object, multiplied by the gravitational constant, the constant for uh, acceleration due to gravity, which is around 10 meters per second squared, multiplied by its height above the ground. So let's say I uh, hold a book like five meters above the ground. Then I, I just hold it still. It'll have energy even though it's like not even moving because this is stored energy. Because if I were to release it, then that stored energy will become what is called kinetic energy, which is what we'll talk about right after this. And the way to calculate this uh, stored potential energy is just the mass of that book multiplied by g multiplied by the height of the ground. So if I drop that book, that potential energy will be converted into kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is just known as the energy of motion, is the energy associated with things moving. So kinetic energy, as abbreviated here, uh, Ke, is defined as one half times the mass of an object times the speed of the object squared. So one half mv squared.
Okay, finally, there is momentum. Momentum is, uh, you've probably heard the momentum in like, or the word momentum in like a non-physical or non, uh, non-physics, non-scientific context. So it's like something to do with things moving, right? So when something is moving and it has mass, then it will have a momentum. And that momentum is just equal to mass times velocity. In physics, there are two main, most important laws that have the word conservation in it. There is conservation of energy and there is conservation of momentum. So here we have the conservation of energy. What this basically means, like conservation, is like energy is conserved. You cannot just like create energy out of nothing or like just destroy energy completely. Um, so energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be transferred from one form to the other. So an example of energy conservation would be if you drop a ball from the roof of a tower. Um, this question describes a ball being dropped from the roof of a tower and asks, how fast will this ball be after falling 500 meters? So what we can use to solve this problem you might remember uh, kinematics. When we did problems similar to this, you could actually solve this with kin kinematic equations. If you remember like delta x equals one half at squared, we could use that to solve this equation. But that would require a few extra steps and that would be uh, unnecessary extra steps. We could use something called the conservation of energy to make the solution a lot nicer. So since we know that energy cannot be created or destroyed, we know that all the potential energy that the ball has at the roof of the tower will be converted to the kinetic energy when it is falling uh, 500 meters below the roof of the tower. So the solution to this problem would just be to equate the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy. So kinetic energy, on the previous slide, we had kinetic energy equals one half NV, mv squared. And we have gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh. Now, if you divide m by both sides, multiply both sides by two, and then solve for v, the speed that we're looking for, uh, we'll get that the speed v is equal to the square root of two gh. So this is a very important result um, that arises from the conservation of energy. And we can directly plug in g, which is around 10 meters per second squared, and then h, which is 500 meters over here, and then get our answer of 100 meters per second. All right. OK, so. All right, so conservation of momentum. Uh, this is all about like collisions, crashing cars, you know, crashing balls, like crashing anything. It's all about collisions. Conservation of momentum is another important conservation law in physics. And it basically says the momentum cannot be created or destroyed, but there is a condition here. The condition is that when there is no net force on the system, meaning like, if you sum up the forces in a system, uh, if it's equal to zero, then momentum will be conserved. So let's just take this example of this two kilogram object moving at five meters per second towards this stationary five kilogram object over here. Then uh, we'll, uh, these two objects we can observe or observe to like collide and we'll see that these two objects will stick together. Now, when these two objects collide, the two kilogram object will exert a force on the five kilogram objects, but the five kilogram force uh, object, sorry, the five kilogram object will also exert a force on the two kilogram object. And from Newton's third law, action equals reaction, we know that these two forces must be equal. And there's no 
like external force from the outside of the system of these two balls. So we know that momentum must be conserved. So now knowing that when this two kilogram object hits this five kilogram object, they stick together, we can use the conservation of momentum to find their final speed after this collision. So we will apply conservation of momentum and we see at the beginning, before the collision, the total momentum in the system is the momentum of this two kilogram object, which is two times five kilogram meters per second. So over here, and then if you add this to the initial momentum of the five kilogram object, which is just zero because it's stationary, then you get 10 kilogram meters per second, and that would be the total momentum of the system. And you know that this on the left hand side of the equation is equal to the final momentum after the collision, which would be equal to seven kilograms when you sum these two objects together, the masses, multiplied by the speed that they move at. So then we can solve for v, the speed at which these two objects move at after the collision.